Hello and thanks for looking at the channel today. And I'm up at the main layout and I'm still running one of the 1970s Hornby J83s R252. This is a 1978 one and I've coupled up a couple of teak style coaches to it this week because I've got it on passenger duty and the firework and gunpowder train from the other day is just parked over at the bottom of the hunt shunting yard. But this 1978 model with its excellent gear ratio is great for a little bit of realistic running around the old Super 4 layout. And I've been having lots of fun with these recently. Now, I seem to be a bit hoarse today, so I hope that's not going to make a difference to how you hear me in the video. I've got no idea what's going on. Perhaps just one of those things. Anyway, let's take a look at this. The Wren W2205, the R1060 tank. I brief, briefly showed you this last week and we're going to have a go, try and get it running on the layout. And look what I've got. Just by the station, I've got three blood and custard type BR coaches. So that looks like it'll be a nice little assembly. So here's a catalogue and this is about 1975. Now there's a bit of glare getting on this from the skylights, but there it is, W2205. And let's just see if I can read out to you the description. 060 R1 class tank locomotive in BR livery. There's an asterisk there. A most widely used loco introduced in 1895, rebuilt in 1914 and continued. And look from indicates plastic body to the loco. Well, now we've seen this one before. This is W2207, the southern item. And we've definitely seen an LMS one. And I think it was new this year, 1975. So let me see if I can just find it. Here it is. Look at that. That's a beautiful item. W2204. Right, we'll just have a quick glance at the price list. And 2204, 5 and 7, which are all the same type of loco. The one we're looking at today, W2205 in BR Black, £5 and 19 pence in 1975. Now, interesting, you might not see um, the catalogue has a few differences. Now, I'm going to try and hold this steady. It's a bit difficult, but the running number there on that particular model, I think, matches the one we're looking at today. But if I go to the description, I think this one's got a slightly different one. That's 31340. And I'm just going to lift the lid on this box. Let's have a look. Still. And that one is just excuse the fiddling. That one is 31337. So other running numbers available on this model, probably depending on year. Right, I'm going to get this over to the bench now so we can get it out of the box together and see what it's going to take to get it running alongside this little Hornby 060. Okay, well, let's see how I get on with my croaky voice. So I've just slipped the top back on and we can see W2205 060 tank black BR. We've got the usual sort of Wren artwork, which is all very lovely. The yellow and the greys and this outline on the box of a 264. So I'm just going to lift the lid. There's nothing inside the lid, just that's how it is. And if we look on the box, there's just those remnants there. No other markings, a couple of staples in the back. So let's open it up properly now. And 
I haven't taken it out because I wanted to do it all on camera this week. So here's firstly the instruction sheet, lovely and crisp. I'll just open it out a bit and lots of information there for rush replacement, running, changing the couplings, you know, from Hornby 00 to Triangle, tension lock, lots of really interesting, excellent information. Um, and it is indeed, actually, I thought I could fold it out, but it does seem to be just a very thick piece of paper, almost card, that's just printed on both sides. And look, there we have GNR Wren Limited, Bowlers Croft, Basildon, Essex, England. Right, so I am now going to lift it out. This is probably the first time it's been out for a long time. And I'm just going to remove this packing ring. I'm going to grab it just using an old cotton glove because I really want to try and preserve this. So I'm going to take the loco out just for a minute and pop it down just there. So in the box we've got a couple of packing rings and just here this is so that you can convert to Hornby 00 style coupling so that's a nice little accessory pack. So we've got the tissue paper, two packing rings and some couplings and the instructions. So I'm going to put the box to one side now and we'll take a look at the item. So I'm picking it up carefully by the ends and hopefully you can see that it's quite a lovely looking R1, started off as a Hornby 00 model. Um, a little bit of, it's a bit of red paint on that buffer but uh, they're just painted silver. And if I just turn it round holding it by the wheels it does indeed look in quite crisp condition. Okay, I'm just going to put it straight on the rails. Let's move that glove out of the way. Well, it does move a bit. But it's a bit noisy. So we have got life. But it's going to want a service before we run it. So I'm going to have a go at taking it apart to show you what's inside. So I'm just going to grip it in this polystyrene because we've got good old fashioned screw down the chimney on this. So there are two lovely brass safety valves there. So I'm just ensuring that I've got the screw nicely. Hopefully that's undone. The body's quite tight but I'm just going to pick it up now because it locates in the back of the chassis on a metal plate so once we've just gently you know, ease that so let's put the chassis down there for a minute and take a look at the body shell now it's off so the decals are quite shiny on the matte paintwork so they stand out. There's a little bit of detail here and there, a few rivets. Um, I will remove that screw. Super long item there, threaded all the way up so you've got to be careful not to do it too tight. In fact, does it bottom out or would it go right through? Well, I don't know whether you can see but the screw hole does go right through the chassis so anyone who was over over keen on the screwdriver could damage this model by over tightening the screw. So look, GNR Ren Limited, made in England, and you can just see um, I don't know, it looks like a heat mark in there. So whether that's just where something to do with the moulding, I don't know. It's quite strange. Or where it's been resting on a wire. Doesn't look like it's done much running, so I wouldn't have thought it was heat damage, but an interesting mark. But the body shell is very light, but good quality. And a little bit of coal in the bunker there. Some lovely round windows. And 
a beautiful item. Right, I'm going to put that down now and we'll take a look at this. Now, if you just bear with me one minute. So I've just been over to the gunpowder and freight train because on the the Lomac wagon or the well wagon I had this motor which I'm sort of using as a load but it is indeed a spare motor for a loco such as this so we can take a really close look at that in a minute without me having to take this one out because it doesn't look like it's done anything does it? So we've got quite a large suppressor there, maybe two suppressors, because I think there's one in this yellow as well. And lovely, bright, almost crimson windings. The armature's clean. There's a little bit of end float on that, isn't there? So maybe, let me just, I think we'll have to adjust that slightly. And that's done down here. And I can show you on this motor with a bolt with a lock nut on the outside and let's just try this one that's got a little bit of end float but not the same amount as on the model so I think we'll look at this motor actually because I can get it a bit closer to the camera so you can see it's just a three pole motor running in quite nice probably sintered brushes uh, bushes apologies and then very very like the XO4, you've got carbon brushes soldered to brass arms that go through an insulator and use a shared spring. So it's kind of like Hornby 00's version of an XO4, but there are thrust balls in this motor, so when you rebuild them, it's quite nice to put a little bit of a little bit of molly grease or something into the bearing, and then when you adjust it, you can just really get the armature to rotate nicely with the minimum of end float. Great looking thing isn't it? Very heavy because of that plastic body. So we've got a, a sort of car chassis. We've got a pickup assembly which is very like the one used by Triang, Triang Hornby. Two wipers on two wheels. No flanges on the centre wheel on this model so there's a soldered on wire. Uh, you can see that the the couplings are riveted. In the case of a front one, it's riveted to a special brass post that I believe the Hornby 00 coupling would clip right into. And then the back one, that's riveted as well. So let's just take a look at those couplings because there's a bit of work involved if you want to change them over. So I'm just reaching in the box now to get the pack. I'm not going to open it, but I think we can see well, there's a screw. One coupling is a clip-on type and one coupling has a hole. I don't know, there must be some instructions. Let's take a look, see what it says about changing them because I think it's probably coupling conversion. Right, so remove the triangle couplings by filing away the head of the rivets. Push the open V of coupling under shoulder of brass stud and firmly press home. Fit crank coupling to rear with shoulder screw through coupling with washer on top screw. Yeah, that's that sounds easy, doesn't it? Probably quite easy when you get to do it but uh, certainly not a five minute job but we're going to be leaving these couplings on so quite a large weight at the front lovely spoke wheels there's no problem with any of these being seized so I'm just going to go off camera now and I'm going to adjust that end float because I think I'm going to have to take the motor out to do that and then I'm just going to check the brushes, but they look all right to me. A little bit of oil on the axles and a little bit of white grease on the gear. So I'll be back in a minute when this work is done and we'll just see how it looks on the test track. 
Right, well, I thought we'd just come back halfway through the servicing. And I'll just show you, the motor is now just removed from the chassis. I've put the white grease on and I've lubricated the axles and the pivots of the con rod, crank rod, whatever you want to call it. But there is something that's always a good idea on these Wren models. And it's just to check each of the two grub screws on the drive gear because they're sometimes a little bit loose. So I've just checked that one and given it a sixteenth of a turn. That one is tight. So one of them was tight and one of them required just a little nip. So we've got white grease on the gear, we've got oil on the axles, um, oil on each of the bearings. Now the bearings do look a little bit like there's some old oil or grease in there, but the capillary action of the new oil, it's sucked it in. So I'm going to see how it goes because I don't really want to take the motor apart unless I have to. So what I've got to do now is just fit the motor back to the chassis, which is really easy. And just make sure I don't get that wire trapped. And underneath, there's just two screw holes. So while the camera's running, I'll have a go at getting those in. It's funny actually, because on some of these models, I've actually seen a shim, a little bit like the Ringfield motor models. So I think, you know, there were definitely variances in castings and other things. Because on some of the Ringfield motor models, 8Fs, things like that, you often find that they've put a shim in there so the gear, the worm to the gear isn't too tight. And the main thing to do is when you're putting this in, just maintain a little bit of care to make sure you don't get the worm wheel resting on the teeth of this spur gear because it, it's been known in the past for people to put the motor in and think it's in and tighten up the screws and bend the armature shaft and that's especially common on ringfield motors. Right well it looks pretty neat doesn't it so I'm going to put it back down on the test track and uh, just make sure nothing's in the way. Let's put a bit of power on. It's got nice gearing this model so it's just going to come back into view. Already quieter. I think we'll slip the body on right now. Let's see if I can do that while you're watching. Um, now sometimes this hopefully you can see this tab I don't know whether the material that Ren made the body with is getting a little you know whether it's moving slightly it's just so incredibly tight sometimes to locate now oh, that's gone on much better so just yeah there's I tell you what there's just a little the little bit of springiness is the the wire um, and I just need to locate the screw I'm going to be especially careful not to do this up too tight so I'm just using my fingers on the blade of the screwdriver so I can't apply too much torque and I think that's going to be it right so here we are We'll do the pickup test in a minute. A little bit more noise now the body's on, but it's it's nice noise. Right, so I'm going to lift the rear wheels off. So there's no problem with the front pickup. And now I'll lift the front wheels off. Yeah, so no need to go meddling around with those pickups. Right, I think. I just need to make sure I've turned the power off. Did you see that? It was almost crawling there. Still on the Marshall 3 controller. So I know what. Let's set it to pulse or half wave and look at the slow running. Now that's not too bad, is it? And bear in mind we're 
we're going back to the 1960s with the controller and the 1970s with this motor and it's yet to be properly run in but look at that with this old technology you can still get some very realistic movements of your locos not a single transistor or semiconductor in sight now it did stall then so i'm just going to move that in case it was the track i ought to give this bit of track a clean obviously if you want to do this sort of slow running your wheels and track need to be absolutely mint right that's enough of that it's time to get over to the main layout and see how it runs compared to the more modern Hornby item. So you might still be able to hear the little J83. Here's the Ren R1 and I'm going to give it a go. So let's see if I can just collect these coaches. and do a nice slow move away. Now, I've got to remember this needs running in so performance will improve. But there they go past each other. Running at similar speeds and let's have a look. Well the Hornby one is about 0.28 of an amp and the Ren one a bit less 0.23. So I think they're both quite healthy. And another loco from long-term storage return to good running condition. And this is gonna be something I think I shall enjoy running on the layout. Now I've had the Warmby items out for a little while now. So I think next week I'll be definitely putting this green J83 away but I'll keep the R1 out and maybe look for another Ren tank loco, maybe one of the bigger 264 locos to keep it company and do some heavy freight hauling. Well, I do seem to be struggling a bit to speak and quite a few of you will probably be thinking, well, that's not such a bad thing. So I'm going to let you watch these trains for a bit longer and until the next video, I'll say goodbye.